last year, again because of sexual relationship problem and all that, and um, she 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 divorced, and now she met a new her a partner about two months ago, and she came to the clinic just for reassurance, came to the clinic for advice because again anxiety and the worries around sexual intercourse came back to her at the, the flashback and all that. So she needs lots of support and she needs um, psychosexual counsellor, she needs other counsellors and she needs lots of support around that. So I'm saying this just for us as professionals to be aware that it's not just a one-off support, it's a, it has to be ongoing support for some of the women that we care for. <coughs> and again, just quickly to share this with you, I know we're running out of time. Um, another text message, as you can see here. This is relating to the infibulation. Um, before the infibulation, which is reversal, some people call it reversal, we go through lots of questions, lots of um, um, counseling and support. And one of the questions I ask the women on one on one is that, is there anything you'd like me to say to your partner or to your husband? And he's always around sex. Please tell him no sex until the area is healed up. Um, which we do go through, but for this woman, and my client have access to me 24 seven, so this is my choice. And I always say to people, my husband has given up on me. <laughs> And I don't mind. Women can call me anytime. So this woman had a defibrillation around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And 12 midnight, my phone rang and said, Comfort, I'm telling you my husband wants to have sex tonight. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do here? So she put the phone down. Then I called, just pretending that I was making sure she was okay. She wasn't bleeding or anything. And I said, can I speak to the husband? And guess who came to the husband? And I hope you make a really drama and say, if you have, remember I told you no sex tonight? If you have sex tonight, you can die. Something bad <laughs> can happen. I hope you at least you don't have that in mind. I guess, I don't know, it might happen. I, I said, and that really showed her. The following day, I called just to confirm. And this is very had to go against her parents to marry somebody uh, um, away from her tribe was a big issue. After that, it was okay. The parents understood and all that. She fought so much for that. And then after that, she had the task of having to explain the fact that she's been through FGM to her partner. Mm. And that was really, really traumatic experience for her. And I remember they were planning um, to get married. They put everything in place. And the partner was from America. And he couldn't understand why she went through FGM. And I remember I saw them on four occasions, um, four sessions, just for counseling and support. In the end, the guy um, called off the marriage. She, he did, honestly. And I still speak to, this was two years ago, and I still speak to this um, young woman on and off just to keep supporting her. So again, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. Very, very complex. Yeah? You can see it here. And he said, I do hope you can help me as I'm not sure where else to turn to. There's so many people out there, not just on FGM, that need our help, that just want to talk to us, but we are too busy to stop and look and listen. Please, I'm not just talking about FGM. We know out there, 
I know we are busy, we're rushing, we are um, over, overworked, underpaid and all that, but take time to listen and take time to know your community is very, very important. How can we help multi-agency um, approach, um, common um, objectives, different approaches, obviously, mutual respect, reaching out to the community, key messages, engaging with the community, very, very important. I will read this. I guess you can read this. I've got very, um, that is me again, doing my bit for the community. Um, this was some rural, rural area in Nigeria. Take home message, which again, work in partnership to save blood girls, reach out to different groups, look for indicators. It's very, very important to save blood girls and women, I say women as well, please be aware that women might be at risk of FGM. Again, last year, I saw a Nigerian woman at my clinic who was mm. FGM at age 37. So be aware of that. Make referrals. Now we have to do mandatory recording, mandatory reporting, which everybody is not very clear with that. It's still confusing, and I know you're smiling, uh, <laughs> Juliet there, but um, there's still lots of, we need clarification around that. People keep calling me, do we report all women? Do we report a 40-year-old that comes to my gynae clinic for support? Do we call social services? Do we call the police? Again, we need clarity from that. Um, I will say Enfield, well done, and thank you so much to <coughs> Ali Mata. For, for organizing today. Um, Enfield, educate a family, you educate a village. I urge you all to go out there and raise awareness of FGM and educate the village to change their mindset and attitude. I urge you to go out there to save God, girls and women who might be at risk of FGM. And on this note, I will kind of raise awareness of this global um, band wrists that I and some group have come up with and please watch the space it wasn't ready, I was meant to bring some today, but watch the space if you need because we've never had any um, wrist band on FGM this mm. is the first ever one please, if you need more information about that or how to order some, please get in touch with me Yes, the struggle continues. FGM is a public health issue, um, and it is on the shoulders of those before us that we stand. And people like Mama Ifwa, which um, you all know, died um, in October. May her soul rest in peace, and thank you. But before that, I'd like to acknowledge Mama Ifwa's husband, Uncle Freddy, who is here. Um, thank you for coming, and we do appreciate you. Thank you.